<laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Today must be copy, copyright Saturday, man. I got hit with three copy, copyright strikes back to back. Look, when I do my YouTube videos, right, I like music a lot, so I like to do uh, put a little instrumental in the, in the background to to give me energy to like keep me going, right? So I'm, today I did two videos. I had one I was talking about the um, the console shortage, and the other was talking about um, uh, Starfield. And I put both videos up, and they got hit with a copyright strike, so I had to take them down. But um, when I played it, when I played the music, I'm really play, I'm playing I'm playing off a YouTube server. I'm I'm playing it off YouTube website. You know what I'm saying? So, and when I do that, I'm actually helping that person, the person who created the, the beat. I'm helping I'm helping their views grow. So. You know, it's like a it's a win-win situation. So whenever I do a, a video, you know, I try to put a little music in the background because I need, you know, I like I like music a lot. You know, so it's not like I'm I'm taking the man the person's beat and then all of a sudden I'm gonna make a video with it and say, oh, I, I create the beat. I'm just using the beat to uh, bring a little energy in the area that I'm working on, and you know, in the area that I'm in, that I'm in. You know. So, I put two videos up today. Got hit with a copyright strike. <laughs> Both of them, and I tried the third time again. I got hit again. I said, "What?" Because what I did was, um, I use, um, uh, I like, I like Nas got this video called Nas is like, right? I liked, I love the instrumental. So I tried to use that in a video today. Got hit with a copyright strike. <laughs> I played three strikes and got struck out. I said, "Okay, let me try, let me, let me stick with the ones that I'm using." They, they probably won't bother me then, but I just use I use uh, instrumentals in the background just to give me the energy I need to like you know so I can get 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 one get get at least one video done today. But anyway, but I'm not using I'm not using the instrumental to, for profit or nothing like that. This just to keep me up built because I, I, I you gotta have a little music when you when, when you're when, especially when you're working. You know, you know, so. Brings a little happiness to you, but anyway, <laughs> what are we talking about today, man? Oh my God, I'm gonna do two videos in one today. Um, the first thing I'm gonna talk about is this: the CPU shortage. CPU shortage. You know, IBM says it's gonna be till 2023. And the next video I'm gonna do, the next one I'm gonna do is a uh, Starfield. I'm gonna do a two in one, a two in one video. But anyway, here we go. It says here. IBM agrees that chip shortage could go on until 2023. With gamers and hardware enthusiasts still struggling to get a hold of tech, IBM agrees with other companies that shortage could go on for a while. Hmm. And by the way, I'm gonna leave both link in the description box. It says here, it seems as though every time news, news surface about the state of computer and gaming hardware, the outcome is often quite bleak. Sadly, it doesn't seem as though there is light at the end of the tunnel just yet. With gamers and hardware enthusiasts still struggling to get hold of new tech due to the global shortage of computer chips, many speculate that the recession could go on at least until 2022. Now IBM has come forward as the next company who agrees with this sentiment. <laughs> In a recent interview, IBM President Jim Whitehurt <clears throat> spoke on BBC over how the tech industry is currently struggling to meet the demands due to the supply shortage as well as reopening of the economy as much as as much as much of the world slowly comes out of the lockdown post pandemic. He said the struggles could affect the industry for at least two more years. One of the major things that have affected his graphics card. The likes of AMD and Nvidia have struggles to manufacture hardware, with the latter resorting to poss possibly relaunching its four-year-old GTX 1080 Ti as a stopgap. <laughs> I mean, the pandemic is real, people. Anyway, says here, it's not only the piece, it's not only PCs that are struggling either. At the end of March, it was announced that the computer chips 
uh, shortage could lead to short to short supplies of the PS5 and Xbox Series X console. Semiconductors are also experiencing shortage, as the likes of Nintendo recently admit that the company may struggle to manufacture its Switch console for the foreseeable future. Mm. In the interview, Whitehurst said the company may have to resort to reusing older technology or extend, extend the life of some of its technologies while the world waits for supplies to become readily available again. IBM is one of the largest multinational technology conglomerates in the world. It often at the forefront of new hardware, such as its fa facial recognition technology, which it ends up canceling canceling last year for political reasons. <laughs> and then it says here, in summary, it seems as though tech consumer will have long wait ahead of them if they if they're looking to get old get hold of new hardware with companies such as nvidia also agreeing that chip shortage could go until perhaps 2023 they are looking a little dismal for those who want a new cpu or, or console with covid 19 still impacting a lot of pl uh, planet all people can do is wait for things to return to some semblance or normalcy and for computer chips and semiconductor to circulate again so they can kick start the tech industry into gear but for now IBM is side by side with other companies that are anticipating anticipating a slow recovery so basically the pandemic in a nutshell is affecting everything you know, the, the, the pandemic is affecting everything and uh, look if you got an Xbox One and PS4, you're going to have to weather the storm. So what you're going to have to do is this. You're going to have to get one of these uh, seven port USB adapters. I got two I got two different ones. Seven port USB adapters. And what you do is this. You connect these to your Xbox One and PS4 and get you some extra hard drives. Because even hard drives are becoming harder to find now. You know, so that's the best way to go about it. Um, it's got to weather the storm right now. They say this might the the pandemic might go until 2023 or even 2024 or even 2025. But if you got an Xbox One and PS4, go and get go and get you some seven 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 port USB adapters. They come with their own uh, power adapter too. You got to connect these to us surge protector. So you take these, put, put them in your Xbox One and PS4. Um, externally connect them and um, get you some external hard drives probably like some six to eight terabyte or even ten or higher each port and then weather the storm this pandemic is real people it's no joke <laughs> yeah that's the way it is and in, in the technology world right now you know and also get you a can of air to spray out your consoles you know get you a couple can of air and spray out your console man. That's the way it is right now. So learn to appreciate what you have right now. If you don't have an Xbox One and PS4, no trip. There's smart delivery. So smart delivery will ease the pain or ease the, the stress of playing next gen games. And that's just the way it is, you know. In the in the tech in the tech world today. So it's all about weathering the storm right now, okay? Alright, next article. This is talking about Starfield. And um you know what? <clears throat> listen, listen, PlayStation fans. You can't have it both ways. Okay? You can't sit there and say, well, you can't make Spider-Man exclusive to you, and then also put time exclusive on games, and then even and and then even extending the time exclusive to where people can't get the games to play it. But then you want to get mad at Microsoft because they bought Zenimax and Bethesda to help their uh to help their uh their Game Pass, right? Their, their Game Pass infrastructure, okay? Because Microsoft had to create some pillars for Game Pass so it can be steady. So the backwards compatibility was one. The Zenimax Bethesda deal was two. And the third piece to that to that puzzle was the bringing the uh, X Cloud over to iOS, so the uh, so the Apple Apple players can Apple uh, Apple fans can play Xbox games on their Apple machines, okay? So 
you PlayStation fans, you can't have it both ways. You can't be putting time exclusive on games, and then you know what I'm saying, and then um, you know t uh, taking taking making Spider-Man exclusive to PlayStation Five or PlayStation period, but then you want to get mad at Microsoft and 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 and, and, and sitting there worrying about if Starfield is coming to, to PlayStation. Once Microsoft made that uh, 7.5 7.5 uh, uh, billion dollar deal with ZeniMax and Bethesda. What that means is that every game, every game that Zenimac and Bethesda does, and every every studio that fall that's that's in that deal, all those games go to Game Pass and Microsoft. It doesn't go to Sony, so you can't get it both ways. So anyway, listen listen to this. Insiders insist Starfield will be Xbox exclusive. <clears throat> New report unofficial confirmed that Bethesda Starfield is a PC and Xbox exclusive and won't be coming. The PlayStation platform. One of video game players most highly anticipated upcoming releases is Bethesda Starfield. Yet due to the the team behind Starfield announcing the game so early, much regarding it has been left to speculation and rumors. There's no speculation and rumors about that because once Microsoft made that deal, everybody in the game industry knew that all those games that ZeniMax and Bethesda have under that deal go straight to Xbox. But anyway, let me continue. That on, that's only growing more and more true with Microsoft acquisition of ZeniMax of, of Bethesda. The large largest issue being confusing over what platform Starfield will be supported on. There's no confusion. PlayStation fans are just stubborn and hard-headed. It seems that a decision has been made. However, multiple reports claim Starfield will be an Xbox console exclusive. In a short and straightforward message on Twitter Friday, Game, Games Beat Jeff Grubb said Starfield ex is exclusive to Xbox and PC. Period. Okay, this is this is me confront, confirming that later that day, IG and Mark uh, Medina shared a similar message, stating on Twitter that Starfield is going to be a PC and Xbox exclusive. While uh, while neither reports provide a source for their inside information, they both felt confident enough enough in the information to say it's completely true. Look, when the Zenimax and Bethesda deal went down, the heads at Bethesda came out and said, "What Microsoft owns, Sony cannot get." Then Phil Spencer followed that up and said, "We will not be pressured." What he said, we, we will not be pressured into bringing games over to, to, to their competitors. Some, something of that sort. But some, something of that sort, if I'm, not, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So, for Sony fans to be sitting there pretending like every, every game got to go to them, they're in for a rude awakening. Because if Microsoft didn't get uh, Spider-Man and then they had to sit there waiting on all them time exclusive, then the same should be go should be go for uh, Bethesda. I mean, um, for Starfield and also Elder Scrolls Six. So the only way to play uh, Starfield and Elder, Elder Scrolls Six is through Game Pass, and that's just the way it is, and through the cloud. Anyway, the article keeps going. the The news that Starfield would be an Xbox exclusive has surprisingly not been shared with confidence up to this point. Prior to now. It's only been said via leaks and unreliable reports. For example, Paul Insider Rand 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 Althor said the same thing as Grub and Medina in April. Further back, Sony said in November 2020 that it wasn't sure whether Starfield would come to PlayStation platforms, leading to a broad assumptions regarding Xbox exclusivity. Listen, listen. Once Microsoft spends $7.5 billion, and that's a lot of money for ZeniMax and Bethesda, what that means is this, that every game that falls on every, uh, on the, every, that, every game that falls under those studios, the competition can't get it, period. That's what it means. Even, even me, even me that, um, that play video games on a regular basis and then read up on the gaming industry understands this. Why are the Sony fan base refusing to to believe this is beyond me? Because when when they did that Spider-Man situation, they took Spider-Man and put it on PlayStation. 
made it made the made a play made a Sony uh, Sony exclusive. The Xbox fans had to weather the storm. And Xbox fans was like, okay. They didn't say nothing, they just kept moving. Okay. When when Sony was putting time exclusive on games and the Xbox fans had to wait, Xbox fans didn't complain. So Microsoft countered that with the Zenimax Bethesda deal, which is 7.5 billion. So and then the heads of Bethesda came out. I remember I remember doing that in a, in a video. They came out and said, look. What Microsoft owns, Sony cannot get. And then um, Phil Spencer followed that up, saying that they will not be pressured into bringing games to their uh, to, to their competitors, something of that sort. And then they said they will deal with games on a case by case basis because when the deal happened, I think Ghost Rider and um, there was another game that was like that was going to PlayStation, but after that. But after that, but after that, that the first game, that, that means the second game probably won't be going to the uh, going to the uh, to, to, to PlayStation. So for Sony fans to be sitting here living in denial and acting like the like 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 they don't like like they don't know that um, Starfield and Elder, Elder Scrolls Six is not coming coming to PlayStation is 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 laughable, man. They're just pretending, okay? They try to act like they don't know or front like they don't know or pretend like they don't know, but they do know. They know once Microsoft made put that much money up and acquired those them studios, they know that it would that they know they know the ramifications of it. So Sony fans need you, you need to stop pretending. You can't have it both ways. And that's just the truth of the matter. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm gonna leave a link in the description box with both these articles. So you can look at him. Nice talking to you people again. Chris, still a Star Wars and Star Trek thing. Work, dark side. I'm gone. Peace.